Hey guys and girls out there in cyberspace, come closer. We're going to be talking about how to auscultate lung sound with my favorite electronic stethoscope, the 3M Littman Core Digital Stethoscope. From here on, I'm gonna go ahead and refer to this stethoscope as the core. Although this space is for people with hearing loss, people with normal hearing, hearing people can benefit from this talk as well. So welcome to Healthy Hearing Loss. My name is Dee Dee. Today we're going to talk about five topics to help you build confidence using a stethoscope to listen to lung sounds. First, we will need to review some very important concepts. There's a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get to it. Number one, sound, frequency and amplitude. In the world of sound, terminologies that are used is frequency and amplitude. In our own hearing loss journey, we may have heard other terms that were interchangeable, such as pitch, loudness, decibel, hertz. To help us have a clear understanding, I'm going to review what is objective and subjective. Objective is what we use to collect measurement and data. So we can look at like spigmonometer. Remember we tried to pronounce this all along? A BP cuff. You can take that and get a measurement of your blood pressure. Like a thermometer to get your temperature. We can rate your pain level on a scale, so that would give us a, a data or a number. So that is all objective. Subjective, on the other hand, is what we see, we feel, we hear. Like if I had fatigue and you had fatigue, we might have totally different feelings of fatigue, right? So it's very subjective. We can think of another example like headaches. You might have a headache in the back or in the front and I have one in the side and I don't know, all over the place. So it's totally different. You can also think of pain, right? So pain can be sharp or dull or achy, that type of thing. So it's completely different from person to person. And another one that's really subjective is tinnitus or tinnitus. And with my tinnitus, I might hear like a whistling sound, a rattling sound. You may hear a kettle whistling or something. So it's totally different between you and I. You can't measure all those, right? They are all subjects to change per person's perception, experience. Having the understanding of what's objective and subjective is going to help us first understand frequency and amplitude and all the terms that go around it because they're not really interchangeable. We're going to go ahead and bring up the objective and this objective is where we talk about frequency. Frequency is a measurement of sound waves that go like this or vibration in one second. And they're measured in hertz, H-E-R-T-Z, or abbreviated as a capital H and a little Z. That is objective, hertz. Now talking about frequency on the objective side, we look at sound if they are shorter and have more waves to them. That is a higher frequency, you know, like ee! I still do my own sound effects. Now, on the other hand, if they are a little bit smaller and farther apart, then that would be a low frequency. Boom. Wee Boom. Something like that. Now we're going on to subjective, and that is where pitch comes in. Now, pitch is a subjective perception of the sound's frequency. So we have objective is frequency in hertz. We have subjective, which is pitch, what you hear about that guy. Now, coming back to the objective side, we'll go to the next term, which is amplitude. That is an objective term, and that is related to the sound energy, and it is the height that is measured. And the height is measured from its mean position and is recorded in decibels. And then when we get to the subjective side, that is where we find loudness. Now, loudness is a subjective perception of amplitude and the loudness has a wide range. When we get back into our hearing loss journey, we have come to know the audiogram. Audiogram goes on this side. It's a graph that the audiologist will test your hearing and plot on the audiogram, representing a number. So when we come to the subjective side, that's you and me, and we have our own perception of sounds. Yours is going to be different than mine, and so forth. So if you take objective from the audiologist recording, they do a lot more than that, but I'm just using this as an example. The audiogram is an objective data 
subjective is us. You need these two things to paint a full picture of mine and your hearing loss. And so these are the information we need to treat hearing loss with technology. Now we can talk about another objective and subjective thing, the stethoscope. That core has developed the Echo app and it's a software that is recording a visual representation of sound. But the subjective side is us using the stethoscope with our hearing aids and any other technology that we're using to try to listen to the stethoscope. Get it? Subjective. What you hear is not going to be the same what I hear. Number two is the setup. In this video, I am going to be using my hearing aids with the stethoscope and a phone. So I have Phonak Adeo, they are rechargeable and they have Bluetooth built in them. They have a volume control on the hearing aid itself. And then the core has a body that has Bluetooth technology and also electronically has a volume that goes up and down increases or decreases. And then you have your smartphone, which also has Bluetooth capabilities. It also has volume on the side. And when you download the Echo... I didn't get that. I've got one called Sleep Sounds. White noise. 100 people. Want to try it? I'm gonna to have to put her back to Alexa, I think. And when you download the Echo app on your phone, there are more features to control sound and it provides visualization of sound. Bluetooth land, we have four ways to increase or adjust the loudness of four devices. Like that's crazy. Like, that's my setup in this video. Go ahead and tell us what your setup is in the comments below. You may be benefiting a fellow person with hearing loss. And you may want to also check out the playlist up there for medical professionals in different stethoscope setups. Number three, preparation. We're going to jump on the Core Echo website and just talk about some of the features that they just put out there on their website real quick. We have the analog and amplified listening modes. It can go up to 40 times sound amplification, has active noise cancellation. It has an adult and pediatric turnable diaphragm, one tap pairing with echo software. Oh, fancy. Wireless listening, telehealth ready, automated murmur detection, I just learned about that yesterday, so I won't talk about that much here, but in future videos, I intend to. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a screenshot of my setting on my Echo app. You turn on the core and make sure that you can hear just directly into your hearing aids. We're gonna talk about the audio settings. We're gonna go ahead and open up my Echo app. Now when we open up the settings in the Echo app, we have at the top devices. And it will say it's connected to the core. There is an audio filter. Way to the right says pulmonary. That's what we want to be using to listen to our lung sounds today. And then you'll see the active noise cancellation. And then it says not active during capture and playback of recordings. And then you have the recording length there. I, I typically keep mine at like 15 seconds, I think. Yeah, so you have between 15 to 1 20 seconds. And then we have play from headphones. Now that's super important because that's going to go directly to your hearing aids. It has volume boost. Then we have the background connection time. And I have mine, I think at five, so, but you can go from one to 30 minutes. And then live stream, and this is paid for, so I don't use it. So that's a subscription. Now, the first thing I like to do is place my stethoscope on myself first, and then I will go to my phone and turn up the volume on my phone. I made that mistake. And I'm gonna show you this clip that I had recorded the other day when I got home. Hello, it's Didi here. So the other day I was at work and I was getting really frustrated at the fact that I could not hear in my stethoscope. And I realized that while I was listening to the patient's lung sounds, I realized, I told you, I realized, I realized a lot, is that I didn't have my volume up all the way on my phone. Just to remind me to tell you this, be sure to turn your volume up and then turn the volume on your core. 
look at the waves to see that it's actually connected by tapping the diaphragm. And then we're ready to listen. Number four, placement for lung sounds. We're gonna be using Jackie. She's my assistant today. Hey Jackie, how's it going? You feeling good today? Yeah. I have my stethoscope here and I have my phone ready to go. I'm going to use the diaphragm. First thing I wanna make sure you're nice and warm. It's nice and quiet in here, but that's not gonna matter with the core because this does a pretty good job making sure that the background noise is diminished. I'm going to listen to your lung sounds. I'm going to be placing the stethoscope on your chest every time you feel it go on. Go ahead and inhale and exhale out through your mouth, please. I'm going to make sure that I warm up the stethoscope because I don't want you to jump out of nowhere. We're going to do one cycle of breath, inspiration and expiration. And we're going to start on the anterior part of the chest, the front of the chest. And now uh, we can start right above the clavicle and take a listen there in and out. And again, over here on the other side, always comparing on each side. So we want to do the symmetry, right? So check one side, then the other. If you just go one side all the way down, there's no way of, of checking from one side or the other. I usually do about six to eight points on the front of the chest. Go underneath the clavicles to the second intercostal space, in and out, in and out, and go right down to the next spot. So that would be two, four, something of that effect. And always get the sides, the lateral sides of the chest so that you can listen there at the basis. I would do the same thing on the posterior side on the back, about six or eight placements on the back as well. Listening, comparing from one side to the other, listening for the vesicular lung sounds. That's what you're going to hear mostly in the back. In the front, you might hear some bronchial sounds, but for the most part, all I really listen for is the vesicular lung sounds, which is a normal in and out. I'm not going to do the full assessment here and do the rest of the inspection, palpation, and percussion. I'm going to link a video on the bottom so you can watch that and get the full gist of the physical exam. Number five, anatomy and physiology. Quick review of the respiratory system. Okay, when I think about my stethoscope touching any part of the body, especially the chest, I am thinking about what is underneath my stethoscope. So I'm always thinking about the anatomy and physiology of the body when I'm using my stethoscope and all the rest of my exam, of course. You probably do the same thing, right? Now we know we have the upper airway, which is the nasal cavity and the nasal pharynx and the pharynx itself. And then we have the lower airways, which we know is the larynx, the voice box, the trachea, the bronchi, and the lungs themselves. And just a quick review, the large airways are semi-flexible fibrous conductive tissue, like the trachea and the bronchi, the left and the right bronchi, as well as the lungs. And then the smaller airways, it's whatever around or attached to the airway, the respiratory system, like the pleura that's around the lungs themselves, that they, it has like a slippery internal surface so that it doesn't cause any friction and it also acts as a protector to the lungs. And then the very inferior part of the lungs we have those alveolar stacks, all those individual or alveoli that does the gas exchange from the lungs to the blood. We can't forget the actual muscles, right? We have the diaphragm and then we have the intercostal muscles in between your ribs that allow the expansion and contraction of the thoracic body in the lungs. That's it for number five. Bonus topic, abnormal lung sounds. After Tisha's lung sounds, I'm gonna talk about three of them here, just to kind of give us a little idea. I'll give you a little sound of it, you know, maybe what they might be suggestive of. First, we're gonna talk about the wheezing. We have wheezes that are in the larger airways. They are high-pitched, continuous whistling sounds, usually worse on expiration. And the dominant frequency for this is around 400 hertz. That's the objective data, right? And then the next one we're going to talk about is rock eye. Sometimes known as coarse rails. And these are also heard in the larger airways. And you will hear low-pitched, continuous rattling sound on both inspiration and expiration. And the dominant frequency of this one is around 200 hertz. So the next time you listen to wheezes, think about that. 
Yeah, we used to around uh, 400 hertz. And the, oh, if it's not that high, if it's a little bit lower in the 200 hertz, then that would be more to rock eye. Both wheezes and rock eye suggest asthma, COPD, airway obstruction, or a mucus plug. And then we talk about the fine crackles, which are rails. And these are in the small airway, soft, discontinuous, popping and non-musical sounds in inspiration and sometimes expiration. And if you think about rubbing the hair by your, your hearing aid right at the microphone, that's what it would sound a little bit like, I guess. The popping sound is generated by the passage of air through that accumulated secretions within the large and medium-sized airways. And the frequency around there is about 800 hertz. And these are suggested by COPD, pneumonia, and heart failure. I put all kinds of links in the description below to cover how to listen to lung sound, anything you want to know more about is full exam, all that kind of stuff. Taking the core, having the hearing aids, taking your phone, and making sure all the volumes are up where they need to be for you to hear the lung sound as good as you can. All right, Jackie, I think we're ready to go home. We'll say bye. Bye. Catch you later. Bye.